Hello everyone, you are welcome back to Nyx Little Space once again. My name is Inka. I want to welcome all our new subscriber. All our new subscriber, you're welcome to the channel. Our whole subscriber, I appreciate you. Thank you for being around on the channel. And please, if you have not subscribed, please kindly do that. Okay, so today I'm going to be showing us how we can draft our home basic bodies block. Please, if you have not watched the previous tutorial on how to take measurement, please kindly do that. And if you have done so, join me as I, as I show you how you can use that measurement to draft your own basic bodies block. Basic bodies pattern is the foundation of every garment. So we need to get it right. If you don't get it right, all your style will not be good. So we need to actually get this right so that everything we use it to make can be perfect. So, and I'm going to be showing you the step-by-step -step on how you can draft it in this tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how you can transfer it to fabric and I'm going to be showing you how you can sew it together as well as fixing your zip. So, join me as I. Show you how you can draft your own basic bodice pattern. If you have not watched the previous tutorial on how to take measurement, please kindly do that so that you will understand better. So here are the uh, tools I'm going to be using for this project. I'm going to be using my ruler, my pattern master and my paper scissors and my tape and also you'll be needing pencil and eraser but for me today i'm going to be using marker so that my lines can be bold enough for us to see so please try and get all these tools they are very cheap i think this goes for just two thousand euro in the market though we have some that are costly like ten thousand euro but this will equally do the job like exactly the same thing so you can go for this So here are the measurements I'm going to be using for this project. And note, all your circumference measurements, that is your bust circumference, your waist circumference, your hip circumference, will be divided into four. While your across chest measurements will be divided into two. Your across back measurements will be divided into two. Your nipple to nipple measurements will be divided into two. Your shoulder measurements will be divided into two. So that's how you're going to divide all those measurements. Meanwhile, all your length measurements, you're not going to alter them. They are just going to be the same. Like from your shoulder to your bust point to your under bust, you know, all those lengthwise measurements will remain the same. You're not going to divide them. Then your neck measurements also we divided into five that's the only one that is divided into five every other circumference measurement will be divided into four except for the across chest across back and nipple to nipple that will be divided into two so the first thing i'm going to be doing is to rule a guideline to have a starting point for my pattern so just rule a guideline I usually do one inch for my guideline. There are no specification to this. You can rule as you desire, but just make sure it's straight. So now that I have my guideline drawn, the next thing I'm going to do is to, starting from this edge of my paper, I'm going to measure towards the other side half of my biggest circumference so as you can see in the measurements my biggest circumference is hip measurements which is 42 half of that is 21 so i'm going to be measuring that 21 on this line then plus extra three inches because i like after drafting my whole pattern i like to have enough room to insert all my allowances so i'm going to be measuring 21 plus 3 on this line which is 24 so i'm going to be measuring 24 on this line here so i have my 24 inches mark so the next thing i'm going to do is to rule that line all the way down Oh, 
Okay, so now I'm going to be considering this line that I just wrote as my center back. So I'm going to label it CB. Then this, my the head of my paper here, I'm going to consider it as my center front. So I'll label it CF. So after that, I'm going to measure, starting from this, my guideline, I'll measure two inches downward. I'll consider that as my shoulder line. This two inches is standard for almost everybody, but if, you, if, if the bust measurement is less than 36 downward, you can use 1.5. If it's still less than like 30, you can use one. So it depends on the bust measurement. So if your bust is less than 36, use 1.5. But if it's more than 36, like from 36 upward, you can use two inches. It's fine for almost all. So, starting from my guideline, I'm going to measure down my armhole circumference divided by two. My armhole is 18.5. If I divide that by two, I'll have 9.2. So I'll measure the 9.2 here. That is 9.25. So I'll measure it nine and a quarter. I'll measure it there. So I'm going to rule these lines across now and I'll label them. It's only this two line that is peculiar to both the front and the back. Every other length is not the same again. So this is my chest line. I'll call it C. Then this is my shoulder line, the first one here. is my shoulder line so I'll call it S so the next thing you do now is to divide this line into two and rule it all the way down so that you can demarcate both the front and the back so starting from your guideline you measure whatever you have Remember, I have 24. If I divide that by 2, I'll have 12. So I'll, I'll rule the line all the way down. You can just measure the 12 inches randomly like that so that your line can be straight. Okay, let me take this again. The first line here is my guideline. The second line, which is two inches downward from the guideline, is my shoulder line. Then the next one is my chest line, which is the armhole line. That is your armhole circumference divided by two. That is this line. So now, only these two lines this my shoulder line and my chest line are peculiar to both the front and the back. So starting from my guideline now, I'm going to measure my front waist length, which is 17.5. I'll measure that. Then I'll come to the back side of the pattern. I'll measure the back waist length, which is 15.5. Which is 15.5 so I'm going to rule the front waistline to this point I'm not going to extend to the back side of the pattern then I'll rule the back waistline to this line I'm not going to come towards this other side of the block So this is what I have. 
so far so the next thing you want to do now is to divide your neck circumference by five from the measurement you can see my neck circumference is 15 i will divide that by five that's going to give me three inches so starting from the edge of my fabric that is from my center front here i'm going to measure the three inches like that then for the neck depth for the neck depth in front the neck depth and the neck width they are the same in front so if i have three inches towards this side i'm going to have three inches downward you know we are still going to be altering this neck in case you are making a different neckline straight away you can just put your curve and connect it So this is my front neckline. So I'll go to the center back again. See this line? This line is my center back. Starting from here, from my center back, I'm going to measure the three inches again for the neck width. Then the neck depth of the back is going to be 0 0.5. So I'll measure the 0 0.5. Then I'll use my curve to connect the points together. So after doing that, the next thing you want to do now is to come to the center front. You measure towards this side, your across chest measurement divided by two. The across chest is 14. If I divide that by two, I'll have seven. So I'll measure seven inches. And I'm going to rule this line to my chest line. Then you go to the center back. Starting from here, you measure the across back measurement divided by 2. The across back is 15.5 divided by 2. That gives me 7.75. .75. So I'll measure that. Then I'll roll it to the chest line. So this is what I have so far. The next thing you want to do now is to shape the ham hole. And how do you do that now? Starting from your shoulder line, from this line here, you come up by half inch, 0 0.5, half inch. You come up like that. Then you just square a small line. Okay. If you remember, the shoulder measurement is 16 inches. 16 inches divided by 2 is going to give me 8 inches. So the shoulder I'm working with now is 8 inches. So, and I already have 3 inches as the neck width here. So, 3 inches out of 8 is going to be 5. So, the remaining shoulder measurement is 5 inches. So, I'll place my tape measure on the neckline. And I will measure the five inches touching this line that I put here. So this is the point. I'm going to connect it to the neck line. You see, sometimes the line can extend past your armhole line. It doesn't matter. So after that, for the front, in an angle here, you are going to measure one inch outward like this in an angle. One inch like this. Can you see that? Then I will locate the midpoint of this line, starting from this, my shoulder line now. I will locate the midpoint. Here I have eight, half of that is four, so I'll make a point at that place. Then I'll use my curve to connect a curve, touching all the points. If you have it straight at once, it's good. If you don't have, no problem, just put it away. I'm putting it. First connect to the chest line like that. Then you, you rotate it and connect to that point that you have there. 
then from there you take it to the shoulder line like this so this is the front armhole cuff you can see that it's very deep that is how front armhole should be if you are not having this shape it means you are doing something wrong you need to retrace your steps and then do it right so now you go to the back under your shoulder line again you come up by half inch like you did to the front come up by half inch and then you square a line like you did to the front then you are going to be measuring you know the shoulder like i said is 18 inches after dividing it into two you you measure the remaining five inches starting from your neck you measure the remaining five inches like that touching the line that you just make there okay it's on this my shoulder line which is great if it's still not on it it doesn't matter it can extend more than that and it may not even get up to that so so in an angle here you come out by three quarter inch that is 0 0.75 you come up by three quarter inch like that then you use your french curve to make it off and connect it back to this point okay so this is my back armhole cuff and the distance in an angle here is 0 0.75 then for the front armhole the distance is one inch so this is what i have so far so the next thing you want to do now is to input your circumference measurement the boss is 40 divided by 4 that would be 10 so starting from my center front i'm going to measure 10 inches then i'll come to the waistline the waist is 32 divided by 4 that is 8 inches i'll measure 8 inches then i'll connect these points together Then I'll go to the back. I'll measure the same thing. Both divided by 4. On the chest line, I'm going to input the measurement, which is 10. I'm going to input the measurement, starting from my center back line. So I'll measure the 10 inches. Then I'll go to the waistline. I'll measure the waist circumference divided by 4, which is 32 divided by 4. Which is 8 inches. I will measure the 8 inches. Then I will connect it together. Okay, so this is what I have. So the next thing you want to do now is you can decide to elongate it to a blouse length or to a gown length. So you can decide to do that. Alright, so let's do that. The standard hip measurement starting from the waistline is 8 inches. So, from my waistline here, I'm going to measure 8 inches downward. Then I'll rule a line. And if you're making a gown, you can just elongate everything now to your gown length. So, it depends on what you want, but we are just going to be stopping at this blouse length. That is the standard hip line here. And sometimes your hip line may be shorter than your blouse length. So you can extend it to whichever length you desire for your blouse. It's okay like that. So then you go to the back again. You measure 8 inches downward. Like I told you, the distance from your waistline to your hip line is 8 inches for almost everybody. But if the person is really tall, it can be 9. And if the person is very short like if the person is short it can be seven so it depends on the trunk of individual that is how tall you are because some have longer trunk so but the standard is eight inches so i'm going to be working with the eight inches so starting from the waistline at the back i'm going to go down by eight inches then i'll roll it So 
I want you to be clear on something. Let's assume that you are elongating this and you're making it into a long gown or even a short gown. Note, the front length is going to be longer than the back in length because you can see the front block now is two inches longer than the back by the time you finish doing everything we align properly there will be no shortage of any kind so if you're making like let's say you're making 40 inches length of gown the front will be 40 inches while the back will be 38 inches that's if the difference between your front length uh, your front waist length and the back waist length is two inches but if it depends on the difference between the two of them let's assume that it's 1.5 if your gown length is 40 the back of the gown will be 38.5 so it depends on the difference between the front waist length and the back waist length so i believe that is clear now so on this line that you just put now you can put your hip measurement the hip is 42 divided by 4 that will be 10.5 i'll make sure this 10.5 starting from my from the edge of my paper here which is my center front i'll make sure the 10.5 then i'll use the curve part of the ruler to connect it to the waistline like this then on the back again, starting from the center back, so the same 10.5 inches, which is hip divided by 4. So 10.5, you measure it like that. Then you use the curved part again to connect it together to the waistline. So this is what I have now. So the next thing you want to do now is to input your darts. So starting from your guideline here, you measure down your nipple position, that is the apex. So the nipple position here is 10.5. I'll make a point. And under my point, I'm going to measure the nipple to nipple distance, which is 8 inches divided by 2, which is 4. So I'll measure the 4. Then I'll come to the waistline, I'll measure the same 4. I'll go to the hip line, I will measure the same four. Then I'm going to roll it into a straight line. Can we see that? Now we are going to be putting the bust dart. So, and bust dart is only for the front, it's only for the front block. So, starting from your chest line, you measure three points five inches downward 3.5 inches is standard for everybody here. 3.5 is standard so from that point you connect it to the nipple to nipple distance like this okay let me roll this one first this is what i have now this distance from here to here is the nipple to nipple distance then you roll it down so now from that your three and a half inches point you roll it to the bust point. Can we see that? So for the bust that the width of the dart is the difference between the back waist length and the front waist length. So here is my back waist length and here is my front waist length. So I will just measure the distance. Here I have 2 inches. So the width of my bust dart is 2 inches because 2 inches is the difference between my back waist length and my front waist length. So I'm going to be measuring 1 inch to the left and 1 inch to the right of the line. So I'm going to be connecting it back to the nipple position. That is your nipple point. But I'm not going to be stopping exactly on the nipple point. I'm going to be measuring one inch before I get to the nipple point. So that's where the, the dart is going to stop. So the dart is stopping one inch away from the nipple point. But if the person is really busty, you can go 
as far as one and a half away from the nipple point. So I'll connect like that. So that is my boss that. So now the next thing is to put our waist that and your waist that is the difference between the bust measurement here and the waist measurement here. So let me do this. First thing you want to do is to make a dotted line connecting the chest line to the waistline so that you can know the difference between the bust and the waistline. So just do it this way. So the next thing you want to do now is to measure the difference now between, between your bust and your waist. So the difference I have here is 2 inches. You just measure from that your dotted line to your waist measurements like this. So I have 2 inches as the difference between the bust and the waist. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving some of this uh, some of this excess to my size seam and I'm going to be using the remaining as one. Waist that. So basically, I just like to divide it into two. Now I have two inches as the difference between the bust and the waist. So I'm going to be giving one to my side seam and I'm going to be using one as my waist dart. So you don't just gauge and say, okay, my dart is one one. No, you don't do that. You share the excess between the bust line and the waist line into two and give some to your side seam and then some to your waist dart. So straight away from my dotted line i'm going to come inward by one inch because i'm giving one of the uh, two inches i get in excess so i'll measure the one inch like this then the remaining one inch i'm going to be putting it here on my waistline so the one inch i'm going to divide it between this line so i'll measure half to the left and then half to the right So just go and notice that somewhere, your dart, your waist dart, is the difference between your divided bust and your, the, your divided waist. So now I'll measure the one inch, like I said, here. I'll measure half to the left and then half to the right. So if you, me if you, if, if, if you measure yours and it's more than two inches, you divide it again, give half of it to your side seam, and then the remaining half you share it on your nipple to nipple distance. So your dart is not going to be stopping on your nipple point here. You are going to come down by one inch. But if you are so busty, you can come down by 1.5 inch. So it depends on how busty you are. But the standard is just one. So I'm going to be putting down one inch like this. So my, 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 my waist dart is stopping one inch before it gets to the nipple point here. Then on the hip line, you come up by two inches. Like this, so you are going to connect all these points together now. So, this is my waist that then here now you connect this back to the to the chest line. So this is now your side seam. Then straight away you can use your cuff to connect this point back to the hip line. So this is what you have now. The front block is, is ready. So we are going to be moving to the back now. For your back, you are not going to be inputting from shoulder to nipple point. No, you are not going to do that. But rather on your chest line, you in input your divided nipple position. That is your nipple to nipple measurement divided by two. Whatever you get, you put it on your chest line, just like you did for the front. So starting from your center back, I'll measure the four inches because the nipple to nipple is eight divided by two. That will give me four. So I'll measure the four. 
Then I'll measure that same four on the waistline. I'll measure the same four on the hip line. Then I'm going to roll this down. Like this. So after that, you are going to come down by one inch from your chest line. Your dart is not going to get to your chest line. Rather, it's stopping one inch before it gets to the chest line. You measure it. Then you go to the hip line, you come up by one inch. So your dart is stopping one inch before it gets to the hip line. So you make another point. Then again, you are going to be making a dotted line from your chest line to your waistline, just like you did to the front, so that you can know the difference. So now this is it. So I'm going to be measuring what I have here now. I have two inches here. So now these two inches, I'm going to be sharing it between my center back, my nipple to nipple measurement, and also my side seam. So that's how I'm going to be sharing this excess now. I'm not just going to put everything on my nipple to nipple distance. And no, I'm not going to do that. I'm sharing needs between these three positions, my center back, my nipple to nipple uh, distance, and then my side seam. So the rule is, out of this excess, the standard you're going to be giving your center back is half inch, that is 0 0.5, yes, that is, that is standard, so that you can follow the, the, the all look part of the back line, so that you can just follow that shape that you have there. And if you are fixing your zip so that your zip is not going to be bulging as well. So that's just the essence of that. So I'm giving 0 0.5 to my center back out of the SS I have. So this is 0 0.5. And then I'm going to be connecting it to my shoulder guide here. Like that. Then I'm going to connect it back to the hip line. So the essence of this is just for the center back to follow the hollow of the center bone. It's just for it to follow the hollow of the back bone. So now we're done with that. So out of the two inches, we already give half to the center back is remaining 1.5 inches. So I'm going to be dividing that 1.5 inches into two. I'm going to give half of it to my size seam and I'm going to be using the remaining one on my nipple to nipple distance here so i'm going to be giving 0 0.75 to my side seam so starting from my dotted line i'll go inward by 0 0.75 like that then i'm going to connect it back to the chest line then i'll use my curve ruler to connect it back to the hip line So this is it. Then the remaining 0 0.75, I'm going to be sharing it between this line. I'll use half of it towards the left and then half of it towards the right. So I'm going to be connecting those points together. Stopping one inch before I get to my chest line. Then stopping one inch before I get to my hip line. So this is it for our basic bodies block. So everything is done and it's looking nice. So the next thing you want to do now is to input your same allowance. So for my same allowance, on my shoulder line, I'll add half inch all around. The armhole, I'm going to add half inch. The size seam, I'm going to be leaving it at one inch. And usually if I'm putting line in, I will make that one to be 1.5 inch. But if I'm, not making it, if I'm not making use of lining, I'll just leave it at one inch. 
you can do half it depends on your comfortable working with so then at the hem i like keeping it as one inch as well so i'm going to be putting all the allowances now so on my shoulder i'm going to put half inch then the ham hole i'll put half inch So the size seam, I'll, I'll put one inch. Then the M line, I'll put one inch as well. Okay, so these are my size seam. Then straight away, you elongate your posters back to your seam allowance. like that then you put the same thing on the back pattern half inch on the shoulder half half inch on the on the armhole sometimes i just do this by size instead of measuring it's easy that way too if you can do it by size it's fantastic if you cannot just measure it Then my size seam, I'm going to be using one inch. Then the M line, I'll use one inch as well. Then for the zip allowance, I usually keep that as one inch too but here on my paper now I don't have up to one inch so I'm just going to be using half inch so don't forget to add zip allowance to your center back one inch zip allowance and if you can work with half it's fine so half in fact half is the best because you don't want plenty excess on your center back So this is my zip allowance now, so I can write zip allowance. So now I've added all my allowance to my block. So let me just mark it so that we can see the ones that are then the zip. So this is it. Our block is ready. The next thing you want to do now is to transfer it to your fabric so that you can test the fit. In case if there's any adjustment, you can make the necessary adjustments. But most time, we don't usually have any adjustments on this on this type of block because everything is measured. So this is it. If you notice, I did not add any allowance on the neck area because i don't usually put any allowance on my neck except on a very rare occasion sure but i don't usually keep any allowance because most time we we see extend the neckline we don't just keep it on three by three because it's really narrow except if you are using collar and yes we can leave it at this but if you are not making use of collar at the end of the day we usually extend it so this is it our basic bodice block is ready if you're making a peplum top you cut from the waistline and then you had half inch seam allowance to the waistline you do the same thing to the back you cut from the waistline and then you had your half inch seam allowance or if you're making it into a gown like a ball gown like something you pleat on the waist or a peplum gown anything you want to do then you half length joining you're going to be cutting this out on the waistline and then you add your half inch seam allowance you do the same thing you cut it on the back waistline and then you had half inch seam allowance but for this i'm just going to uh, transfer this to my calico so that i can test the fit for us so that we can see how it is 
be doing now is to cut it out. So you are going to be cutting on the allowance line. So this is the back and this is the front. So our pattern is ready. The next thing you want to do now is to test the fit on your calico. Um, it's a cotton fabric. Some call it teru. But if you don't have this, you can just use any cotton fabric you have. Something that is not stretchy so that you can know the fit of your garment properly. So I'm going to be putting some notes on my pattern. The first thing you want to do is your center front here. You are going to be cutting it on fold. The center front is on fold. So you write on the pattern, center front, cut on fold. Cut on fold for the center front. Then the back, you're going to be putting cut to. Cut to the center front. You just put cut on fold. We are going to be cutting our our front on fold on the folded. You can see I already put my fabric, and this position here is folded. You can see it's folded. Let me show us very well. You can see I folded this fabric into two. This fabric is folded into two. And here is going to be my center front and it's on fold. Please take note of that, it's on fold. So you place your center front on it like this, making sure you align the edge together with the folded part. Like this then you cut it out then you put the other side the the back you put it again on it and then you are going to be cutting that out by the time you finish cutting this this is going to be into two it's going to be into two pieces so i'm going to be cutting it out now So when you're done cutting it out, the next thing you want to do is to transfer your dart. So I'm going to be teaching you how you're going to transfer your dart. Just get a pin, just a pin like this. Then you push it on your dart and mm -hmm. you push it in. You will see where your dart is. Then you just make a mark. You're going to be using shock to do this, but I'm going to just continue to use marker so that we can see everything. So you push it in like that. Then you go to, for the side seam, just, just note the position of the, the bust that like that, like I have done here. To transfer your dart. Then, you know, you still need the same dart on the other side. So push the pin again. Just push. Front is called unfold. By the time you open it, you have it like this. Can we see? This is our front, and we have successfully transferred all our dirt to the fabric. So if you are using, if you are making yours, please don't use marker. Just use shock to transfer the dirt. So you can keep the back, uh, the front aside then. You do the same thing on the back. You transfer the ways that. Push the pin in like you did to the front.
then you do the same thing to the other side so that's it we have transferred the dart to the back so the next thing you want to do now is to put your notches you notch your zip allowance it's very important notch your zip allowance like that you notch the waistline so notch the waistline on the front as well so this is the back and it's in two pieces the back is into two it's in two pieces why the front is like this So because the front is cut on fold, by the time you open it, you have it like this. The center front is on fold. We can see that. So the next thing now is to sew in our dart. So you just pin like this and then you sew the dart in. You pin it. You can pin it or you sew it directly. So then you sew the dart then. Do the same thing here too. And then you sew it. So I'm going to be showing us how we can do that now. The front first so i'm going to be sewing in my boss that first so i'll mash it together like this then i'll sew So I'll do the other side of the bus that mash it together and then you will sew. So I'll keep the front aside then, I'll sew the back that, just like you did to the front that, so just sew it in. Then take the other side of the back and then you sew. So now when you're done sewing the dart into the back, you're going to be fixing your zip. So you just fix your zip. So this is your zip in between the two back. This is one side of the back and this is the other side. And I'm working with the right side of the back. This is the right side of the back. So this is your zip. Just place it like this. And then you're going to sew it. Now open it so that it will be easy for you to sew. 
and you just follow your zip allowance like that So I'm done attaching the zip to one side, then I will just place this one on top of it like this. And then I'll sew from the down part now. So the next thing you want to do now is to place the front on it. Remember we added half inch for the shoulder joining. So you're just going to sew half inch on the shoulder. You just align the shoulder together like that and then you sew. The side of the shoulder as well. So the next thing you want to do is to join the sides together. I usually join from the back. You can see? I added one inch seam allowance. So I'm going to be sewing it with just one inch seam allowance on the side. Then you make sure you push your you push your uh, boss that downward. Like this. Yes. Then you sew with one inch. Ensuring your notches are, are aligning properly. Then I'll do the other side. Down. This time around. Then I'll sew with one inch seam allowance. So this is it it's ready i'm going to wear it now to ensure us you can hem the down part but because this is just uh, uh for illustration purpose i didn't bother hemming the lower part and i didn't finish the ham hole i didn't finish the neckline it's just for an illustration purpose so i'm going to wear it now and show us says and then you make sure please use your own measurement and you will have the same awesome results so starting from this time onward we're going to be using our pattern to draft every style we're going to be doing on this page. So, can you see the fit? Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video. The fit is so Bye. awesome. Can you see? No gaping anywhere. Can you see the boss that? Can you see the fit on the waist area? See how it follows the shape of my body? It's on the back. Can you see the fit on then the back? Then if you notice on the block I did not have his because while taking measurements we already insert one finger. That one I'm finger there the is the his we already had it to his so awesome. So please yes, just try and follow all the steps and um, ease on the pattern. Do as I have done right. in the video Bye. so that you can have the same awesome results. So but please make sure you use your own measurements. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.